This is how to think during a chess game. It's day four of the Grand Chess Open and I'm super proud of my games today. There's a brilliant move, 95% accuracy and let's start with game one. I played the move e4. There are lots of funny stories by the way. So I played e4. I searched yesterday evening my opponent on Lee Chess and you find Alex Gao. And he plays always 1e5 in all his games. And I said like, ha 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 ha, easy prep. He came at the board and he played c6. What? Actually told me that he has another account, a secret one, where he plays c6 and then he uses that one just to confuse his opponents. I mean, this is, uh, this is uh, incredible. <laughs> Do that, by the way. So he plays the Karakan his entire life. We are in the main line. And now there are lots of theoretical moves. I'm not talking about the Karakan, but in general, look that each side is developing the pieces. Of course, the, knight are, the knights are out. Trying not to lose this bishop, of course. Now I'm trading that bishop, bringing the queen out, and the final piece needs to be developed, the bishop. Now, he played bishop here. I went through for long castle. Here I like to be very aggressive. Once uh, black is castling short, I will play knight here, then g4, g5, open up the files and give checkmate. <laughs> My opponent played knight there. After this, we went very fast because this was theory, all theory up to now. And now guys, next to my board, there is a very funny moment. The board was empty. And if you arrive after 30 minutes from the uh, beginning of the game, you lose the game. After 20 minutes, the player, the black player is running inside the playing goal and he gets the board to just realize that he didn't lose any time because also his opponent was late. So he sits and where is the white player? After 28 minutes, <laughs> white player arrived, plays a move and he leaves again. I don't know what he did, but yeah, he left again, but then he came back. Anyway, this was a uh, short uh, for me, I, it made me laugh. Uh, the queen goes back, of course, because I don't want to lose my queen and now Queen d5. And this is very important, guys. The main move here is actually to go with the queen here, but I don't trade the queens because I want to go for checkmates. I want to play fun games. So I, I go to d3 because the difference is that after queen d5 attacking this pawn, I play c4 to protect, interfere with the attack of the queen. If the queen goes there, I go to b3. Anyway, my opponent here played the move queen f5, which is not a theoretical move. But I was thinking, <laughs> this is thinking because once I'm taking here, I'm taking back with the pawn. Anyway, how to think during a chess game? Up to now, it was all theory. I'm out of theory. You have to start to consider candidates move. Yesterday, I told you that my mistake was that I was thinking deep and not wide. Yes, candidate moves is how you think wide. So I was thinking, okay, here, either I take or I uh, go with the queen away. These are my options. Or I can also move this bishop. Immediately, I noticed that queen takes might be very interesting because after pawn takes, this pawn will be weak. If I can potentially go to win this pawn, I might have an extra pawn after a few moves. In this moment, it makes sense to go deep, but just first white. So I'm taking, I'm calculating to take here, pawn takes knight there, but then I see that the knight could go here, threatening this pawn. I play this, so let's go. I see that the knight can go here, threatening this pawn. And if I protect this pawn, the bishop is taking my knight and my dreams to take this pawn are over. But here, guys, I had calculated everything from the very beginning and I sacrificed my rooks. Uh, because here, if black is taking, the two rooks are under attack, but I can play a genius move, rook e1. I say like, okay, go ahead and take. And I just take back the knight. And then this bishop is going to be lost. And in this position, I'm nearly winning. Let me show you. <laughs> not, not bad, right? Okay, I just was scared that I was not recording. <laughs> Please like the video and subscribe. 
Um, so I played, my opponent didn't play this, but he played knight take d2. And here I had the temptation to just snap the knight, but then I said, no, Alessia, today you think in the right way. And that's what you should do. Every move you have to consider wide, wide, a few options. Then you say, actually, if I take this knight, if I take with the rook, there might be this problem. Uh, so I take with the king, but then there is a check. My king has to move and my opponent is castling. I have an extra pawn, but mm, do I have better? Yes, that's how you have to think. Because here I played rook h1. And that's brilliant because I'm not taking back. I, I'm a piece down for now, but there are two pieces under attack. All my subscribers get more brilliant move than not subscriber. So subscribe. <laughs> okay, let's move on with the game. Um, my opponent took the pawn and now we are back to equal material once I take the bishop. And now again, I was starting to think why not deep and my options are knight b, uh, b3. Okay, I can take this pawn, of course. I can protect this rook. I can play b3. Uh, my first idea was if I take the rook, then the rook is joining here. And that's why I wanted to play rook there to avoid rook e8. I don't want to trade pieces. Then I noticed that after rook takes, and rook e8, let's play those two moves. What do I have? I think I have b3, the knight needs to move. And then I have knight e6 and I will take this pawn. So this is super strong. Uh, and one thing I noticed also is that after b3, my opponent has a shocking move. A shocking good move. If you find it, let me know in the comments. Um, I played rook take b7 after calculating that that's the best move. And this is the best move according to the, the engine as well. I'm just winning a pawn and the move rook e8 is not possible. To, so I can simply go on with rook e1, rook e next, and I'm nearly winning. He played g6, which makes sense. You're trying to kick the knight away. And now again, I, I took some very deep calculation, taking, taking, knight e7. This is all forced because I'm threatening to take this pawn. The rook cannot really be moved because here is hanging. Here I can just take this pawn with check. So the only move is king f7 to protect the pawn. And now again, wide, not deep. If you follow your intuition, what move would you make? Knight takes e6. I'm winning a second pawn. I will have uh, two extra pawns. This should be winning. I can just take it, but no. Wide, not deep. And here I was thinking that after this, the king might go up. And then actually it's still a game that needs to go on because I have one passed pawn and I have another pawn that is uh, not really passed. So if I would have two passed pawn, this would be much easier to convert. But if not, it's not so simple. But then I see that if I play knight d5 check, I was considering shortly in my mind, okay, the knight can go here, 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 there. I have to consider them all. But knight d5 is very strong because the rook is controlling all those squares. The knight is controlling the square. If the king goes here, I, oh, okay, I have this fork. So this was not possible. So the king has to go back and the king will be cut. And then I can use the knight and the rooks to give checkmate. And there we go, king f8. And now I played a move that is actually not the most precise, but I thought I was, I saw everything until the win. Knight c7 attacking the rook and my opponent actually has a crazy resource that is rook h7 because after check he goes here on g8. I'm, I'm still winning but it's harder. Anyway he went for rook c8 and here after knight check he resigned because after uh, king here I'm just playing rook e1 and I'm going to give mate in a few moves. Wanna see the evaluation bar? Brrr. <laughs> this was 96% accuracy and I earned my ticket to play against another title player. And guess who I played? The Fide Master that I play every month in the club of Bern. Yes, he's also from Bern. There are 2,700 players here and I played the guy that I always play against. Amazing. And guess what the opening was? Another Karakan. And guess what next to me happened? 
Again, a problem between my opponents. Basically, the opponent with the black pieces sat down, arrived on time, and he pressed the clock. White was not there. And once white arrived, he said, by the way, I'm black. <laughs> so basically, he was there waiting and to waste his own time. I don't know <laughs> why there is always comedy next to my board. Um, anyway, so we are in another Karakon. I was very happy because I got double white and uh, that's uh, good. Again, we are in the same exact opening, develop your pieces. This H4, H5 is made to get some space and usually white in this opening is castling long and then you want to attack the king. So this H4, H5 is looking 50 moves in the future. But that's theory, eh? I didn't invent it. <laughs> so bishop here trading the bishop the knight is out bishop d2 i'm ready to long castle and i had played against this guy already in the club he's a very strong freedom master and we played exactly this um this position he played c5 and in the game in the club i went for queen b5 but i had analyzed the game and now i knew that knight e4 is actually the best move i Mm, I'm just centralizing my knight. I'm very happy to trade. Actually, he traded. And now my queen is giga strong. I'm attacking this pawn, so the only real move is to go out with the knight. Now, my final move is this pawn is attacked 1, 2, 3. I need to defend it a certain time. Bishop c3. That's the end of my theory. Now, the move he played. Um, well, I'm, okay, I knew one more thing that if he takes. I can trade everything and the end game is slightly better for me. But the movie played was so shocking, c4. I was like, hmm. if I can just play the move d5, I will be completely winning. And here I was thinking in the right way because I thought I was considering wide. What are my options? Castle, castle or 95. I was considering those three moves. Um, Every time you consider wide your moves, then you have to consider for each move wide the moves of your opponent. And I quickly realized I was checking like, okay, after 95, what can he do? He can take, uh, he can protect his knight. How can he protect his knight? Ooh, queen d5. And then I see actually this move is annoying because it's blocking my idea of pushing this pawn on d5 because that would be just too strong. So I understood that no matter what moves I'm going to play, it's going to play queen d5 no matter what. So I had to prepare it in the best way possible and I chose to go long castle. And this is guys the best, the best move according to the engine. Let me show shortly the evaluation bar because I'm a bit better here. So he went with the queen on d5 and now I played my favorite move of the game which is queen g4 and I will tell you why. In general I don't like, why is the engine going down? Yeah, you didn't understand, guys. It's a drunk engine. Actually, if you see with a proper engine, this move is the best move. <laughs> like the video, if you like the drama. <laughs> so, the idea of this move is the following. I don't want to trade the queens, because this king is in trouble. This king will not have an easy life to castle. This bishop cannot move, because I would take this pawn. And if the king is castling long, Maybe I can play knight here and then take this pawn. This doesn't look good. I think long castle is just, is just bad. I can just play knight e5. This pawn is now hanging. There is no way to protect it. And if the knight is trading, I'm taking here. Then I will take uh, this rook. The king is in big danger. This pawn is weak. Ah, that's terrible. So <laughs> he actually played the only move, in my opinion, that black can play in this position, which is the move b5. Okay. I feel like... Mm, something is coming here <laughs> but no panic here i went on with my play 95 and now this move is very flexible because i can take here and then play the move d5 this is my plan or i can also play queen f4 to attack this pawn b4 and now guys i missed a very good move i will remove the engine anyway it's drunk doesn't understand um the best move according to stockfish is knight takes c6 i was thinking considering this move i consider this move i promise but i said like okay of course if the queen the queen is taking i play first d5 if the pawn takes i then move my bishop and this king will be huge i can even take there maybe not sure because then rook g8 
but I, I will have a great position. Maybe I can even give an in-between check. That's crazy. I love it. Um, but after knight takes c6, there is pawn takes here. And mm, I mean, my king is in danger. Actually, here I can just uh, go back. And after this, my king couldn't be safer than that. Remember, guys, if your opponent is taking, this pawn is actually a great shield. Because Bla black can capture this pawn, but can never capture his own pawn. So actually, this pawn is protecting the king so well. Anyway... Unfortunately, here I didn't see this and I found I played the second best move, which is now giving an equal position, more or less. Play the bishop back and he went for rook d8. Now, this pawn is attacked one, two, three times, so I have to find a solution. I was considering a few moves, rook here, rook there, but I played the best move, c3, again. Another time. I was very, I was very proud to analyze this game. Basically, what's the idea? If the pawn is taking, I take back with the bishop, protecting here, and he cannot move anything. He cannot go out with the bishop, he cannot castle, and I'm just going, going on with moves like rook h3, rook f3, attacking this pawn, and hoy boy. So this is not good. I thought like a5 might be a, an idea for him, but now this pawn is protected, so I can simply keep going with my plan. So he chose to move b3, and here I thought like, I'm winning. Wait. <laughs> c3 b3 i'm like i'm winning i'm taking taking c4 uh where is miss queen going hello <laughs> and basically the queen um the queen can just go here but if the queen goes here then um what did i calculate oh yeah i can just play bishop here and my next move is going to be something like this and then d5 I don't have any problem with the king, rook there, he, he doesn't have a move. Uh, but then I saw that actually after c4 he has knight takes. Because if I take the queen, my queen is lost. I said, mm, trick boy. And it took here, but I, I calculated that I can take like this. And even if I lose this pawn, I will win back this one. And this is how the game went. We are in this end game. And now I was thinking so much and I have a very simple way to make at least a draw in this end game which is bishop b4, threatening to take here, king there, uh, now I can just trade everything. Bing, boom, bam, zbada boom. I'm a pawn down, but active king in the endgame is very important. King d2, followed by uh, king c3, my, my burger, the burger that I ate tonight, it just went... <laughs> okay, um, king c3 is going to take this pawn and the endgame is going to be a draw. But I, I took just this pawn, I didn't evaluate that the endgame was a draw and your time was getting shorter. This is still drawish, but it's harder for me because after the trade, now my queen has to move again, I'm attacking this pawn. Um, now I shouldn't take this pawn because actually there is a check here, winning this pawn, my king is then quite weak. So I just went with the rook up, I want to go with the rook here, maybe play queen here, threaten mate, maybe take the pawn. And now I played a5. Ah, by the way, I want to show you a crazy tactic. Here, I thought like after king f8, if I take this pawn, check, it seems like actually this pawn cannot be taken because first of all, the rook is hanging. But there is this check that is crazy because now if I go with the king here, the pawn is falling with check. And if I go with the king here, oops, my queen. That's why here I just went with rook h3, I saw the danger. And uh, he played a5, rook there, king g8. And now, guys, <laughs> this was completely drawish. Look at the evaluation bar if you don't trust me. <laughs> but, 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 life is hard sometimes. <laughs> How is this move losing? Can you please explain me why? There is this pawn that is under attack. I'm threatening mate nearly. That's the problem. I'm actually not threatening anything. I'm just threatening to take a pawn. Then the king goes there and there is nothing. But I left my king, my poor king, unprotected. Queen b4. Actually, this move is not the most precise way to win because apparently I can play queen d4 and I'm protecting everything. But I didn't see it. And I played b3 here. I was also running out of time. And now there is rook d8. The rook is sliding here. If I take this pawn, I can just make a picture because the king is just staying there on 
uh, on h8. I took anyway the pawn because there was no way to bring the queen to the defense otherwise. And then I went to, f to f4. At least I'm controlling this square. So there is not this check. But now the queen is sliding here. I move the king another check. I move the king up and I say like, okay, there is not a check here, not a check here. Surprise me. If, there is a, if you give a check there, I move the king back. And now what? Um, there is the move e5. Oh, <laughs> my queen cannot leave the square because if not, it's checkmate. So I have to go here and now e4. Oh no. Now the pawn is supporting the square. I have to move my rook. And yeah, I tried to fight a bit this endgame because if I can promote this pawn, I'm winning. But he played really good. It took slowly all my pawns. And then the best move was at this point. Check, 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 and now queen here. Now there is just no way to advance. I, I just played a few more moves, but yeah, it's a game over. Guys, this was um, very nice games, but if you want to see another game I won, uh, you can check out this video where I sacrificed my queen in front of Noel. Check it out and see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>